Today I have 10 tips for you if you're buying your first embroidery machine. These tips are going to probably save you money and maybe a little frustration when you get started so you don't buy too small of an embroidery machine. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and I get to spend time filming embroidery machines, sewing machines and sergers and doing short video tutorials that you can find all over our SewingMastery.com website. So once you buy that embroidery machine, if it's one we have filmed, you're going to be able to master it instantly. But what are some of those things that can help help you purchase the right machine. So probably the one question we get most asked at our store is hoop size. So when you're looking at a machine, some hoops are really big and some hoops are small. So the question is, what is the largest size of hoop that particular machine that you're considering to buy will embroider in? Keep in mind that the size of the largest hoop is related to how big the machine is between the needle and the inside of the machine. Sometimes they call that harp space or throat space in there because that's the part where the hoop will move. So if it's small, that's the largest size it can embroider. If you want bigger embroidery, you're gonna to need to buy a machine that has more space. Some machines come with a lot of hoops with the machine. Others come with one, maybe two hoops. Something else that you might wanna ask is how much additional hoops are and what are some optional sizes that you can buy. There's other types of hoops like hat hoops, really small hoops, things to get into smaller areas that can help when embroidering onesies. And like I said, hats or odd positioned locations on garments or items that are already made. Now, when you walk up to an embroidery machine, probably one thing you'll notice immediately is what kind of screen does it have? We used to have only black and white screens with buttons on this side. Now we have machines that have a, an iPad looking screen to them. They're color, you touch them, you touch and hold to get different functions. Well, those are gonna be machines that are with the newer technology. So screen size can make a difference. If you're buying one with a larger screen, you are getting a bigger, better embroidery machine. Now there is a machine for everybody's budget. So just because you can only buy one that with a smaller hoop and maybe a black and white screen, don't feel like you can't get started. That's a great way to learn whether or not embroidery is going to be a fun hobby for you. Speaking of screens, on some embroidery machines, you can bring in a design, and then bring in a second design and maybe add some words across the top. That's where you can kind of do some editing or combining right there on the machine. Now, some machines don't have that capability. If they don't, you bring in a design, you embroider it, then you bring in your next design, move it to the new location and embroider it as a second design. That's not hard and embroidery software, an additional purchase would be a great way to expand your embroidery machine's capability, where you use the computer software to combine all those designs, add the lettering, save it all as one design, and then embroider it all as one design. Next, how do you transfer designs from the computer, which is usually when you've bought designs on a CD or you've downloaded them from the internet? How does that machine that you're looking at transfer designs? The most common use these days is putting a design on a USB stick and then plugging the USB stick into the machine. That does help when your computer's in one room and your embroidery machine is downstairs in your sewing studio. No problem, very easy way to transfer designs. Now, some machines these days have Wi-Fi capabilities. Yes, that is a thing where you're at your computer, you connect and send the designs to the machine in the magic of the air or cloud, and you turn that embroidery machine on and the designs magically appear. So that's the newest technology available. If that is an option for you or you're close to the, picking a machine that has that feature, go for it, it is wonderful. That also means you have kind of the latest, greatest technology and you still have the option of 
of a USB way to transfer designs so you can walk that design to the machine from your computer. So on the side of the machine, if it's got a card slot, that's old technology. So I would technically avoid machines with card slots. As Soon as you see a USB slot or opening in that machine, you know that's probably one that will work for you. Some embroidery machines actually are embroidery and sewing. Make sure you ask if that machine can sew as well. You'll probably find that that is a true statement. There are still a few machines that are embroidery only, which is great. If you already have a sewing machine that you love and you're really just wanting embroidery and you want it as a separate machine, buying an embroidery only machine could make sense. Not all companies make one and it would be something to make sure that all the features you want are found on that particular machine. When we have people that already have a machine that they love, buying an embroidery machine with a lot of their favorite features means oftentimes still sewing on their older machine, but leaving that embroidery machine to really be all used for embroidery. Yes, it will sew, but oftentimes that is not part of the machine that they use the most. But not a bad idea when your machine is in for service that you do have a backup sewing machine. Alphabets. Lettering is something people are always looking to do more of. Personalizing a special graduate gift, a baby arrival, lots of names and dates when it comes to holidays and children. So one thing to look for is how many built-in alphabet styles or fonts are in the machine. Now that doesn't mean that that's the only way to get alphabets. Do keep in mind embroidery software is a way to expand your lettering options. Tons of fonts available, ways to create your own, and some of the companies even include a lettering free program that you download from the company's website. So check out all your options and see if those things are available for that particular brand that you're buying. Two last things I want you to consider when you buy an embroidery machine. Number one, if you are buying from a local store, that's wonderful. Number one, they're there to help you. And number two, you can ask them questions. So do you feel comfortable making a purchase and being part of their store family? There is something to be said about having that support, a place where you can pick up the phone and call or join them for their latest classes and events. That is so key to truly getting the most out of your embroidery machine. So if you only have one store in your area and they do a good job, buy that type of embroidery machine. They are going to make sure that you are successful. That is their job. They want you to be successful. In the sewing industry, that's just part of our nature. We love to help, we want you to be creative, and we want to see what you're working on. And while you're getting comfortable with that store, ask them about their service center. Do they have technicians on site? Can they service your machine uh, there? Or do they send it into the company? So that is something that can help make maybe some times where you need some adjustments, make it go flawless. You bring it in, they take care of it, you're back to sewing and embroidering in no time. So those are some of my most important questions I always help people realize before they buy their first embroidery machine. Now, once you get that embroidery machine, I hope to see you in some of our online courses, like our Embroidery Essentials online course, where we're gonna help you master that machine in the fastest way possible. We're gonna take you from zero to hero. So I'll put links below this YouTube video where you can check out that course and join me right there at your embroidery machine as we work through 15 different embroidery techniques. So if these tips have been helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then also leave us a comment of what was most helpful when you picked out your embroidery machine.